this this leads directly into where we're going today with this this new human this new man the post-human well where you're not just black you're not just white you're not just asian you're hewlett packard but i just find this whole juneteenth theme thing extremely interesting and timely but cryptic and esoteric the exoteric the exoteric aspect of this is inclusion inclusivity representation um atonement they use this term they use these biblical terms atonement this is the the atonement whiteness must atone right now let's be real here the, the history of slavery oppression from jim jim crow to redlining all of these things were horrible tyrannous uh, very sad aspects of our our history but you will find these aspects these whether it be whether it be conflict oppression war and the like you will find this in any history of any people in within any civilization so this is just ours and and personally i feel like we just have to accept this aspect of our history or are is are we saying it's okay of course not but this type of nonsense does nothing but put a band-aid over a bullet wound right and um, infantilize a population of people if the exoteric is equality and all of this political nonsense right showmanship uh the theater drama right if, if the exoteric uh, situation is that what's esoteric about this is that slavery is never ended and this is it oh this isn't news to any of you especially anybody listening to this show this isn't news we understand slavery hasn't ended because we can look at um even something as basic as the straw man and all of, the, of those things right but then we could look at the consumerism and the aspect of useless eaters there's many things we can refer to that describes a type of slavery that still exists amongst the masses. But what I believe is there's a new slavery coming. And it fascinates me to notice how all of this, well, not all of a sudden, it's been since about 2012. It got its peak around 2016, 2017, post-Trump, of course. But this whole concept of slavery and all of these black issues seem to just become important post Obama. And of course, we got 2012 with the Brown situation and the creation of BLM, all of these things, uh, state procured pieces of dr drama, right? All of these things, um, totally controlled, financed and produced by intelligence. But it's interesting how through the short period of time, we got this big push for all of these black issues, almost as if we were living 1968 all over again. I had mentioned this back in 2016. It's like, you know what? Today feels like 1968, all, and though I wasn't alive then, right? I could just assume such based on the history that I'm aware of and kind of lining up some of these things, right? Especially when we look at some of the freedom fighters, quote unquote. But... It's interesting how they've been pushing this black and white thing so hard for so long, whilst beneath all of our noses, a new type of, a new slave trade is beginning. It's no longer the transatlantic slave trade. It's now the new transracial slave trade. We are about to be indoctrinated and initiated into a completely new social uh, economic and political system it is defined by no longer industrial no longer necessarily national corporate no longer multinational takes on a new new makeup we are we are going to be entering a new system that is based on networks digital slash virtual networks and communication businesses shrink businesses merge their technology, the processing of information, and all that which controls their finances 
and their production, their development, their research, etc. All of these things are connected through specific types of information-based networks. Now, what's dangerous about this is when things like hacking or cyber attacks are brought to the table. This concept of cyber attacks, which is the next pandemic. First of all, there's there's the cyber risk of of uh, you know of an actor potentially um, hacking into the system, whatever it might be. There's the privacy risk of all this data that's being collected and the regulations about that data are, are really murky at the moment. And so there's not a lot of clarity into who owns the data, what happens to it, who it gets sold to, how it's being used. And there's even potentially national security and global security risks. And they even warn us about this. But we are, we, that's just the... That's the elitist or the capitalist, uh, technocrats, globocrats. That's that's their world, the network society, um, the the network business industry. They call it impact capitalism, uh, stakeholder capitalism, right? Which is really just uh, the metal, the medical industrial complex, the military industrial complex, as well as media and the state coming together, technically controlling the world. We are entering this system, but see, <laughs> what makes it slavery is that in order for us to function, operate, and exist in this new system, we have to merge with the machines. Now, we don't necessarily have to become robots, but there's one thing that will initiate us into this and will open the door to this type of merging, and that is through biometrics and biotechnology, the route they are using to initiate us is something that is extremely pertinent in our lives. Our lives, in a sense, are contingent on this, this specific thing. It allows access. It allows verification, qualification, etc. This is your identification. This new type of transracial slave trade, it's not about race. Doesn't matter if you're black, doesn't matter if you're white, doesn't matter if you're Asian. This is a this is a new type of transracial human slavery that is going to be even beyond your physical being. It's something that I call the proxy self. Digital twinning is a more academic term. I use my own term proxy self. This is a new type of avatar. Through this avatar, we will be living our lives in the virtual world, in the network society. Why is this slavery? Because that avatar, that identity, that virtual or, or digital identity will be um, extremely limited and there will be parameters and there will be rules and regulations. For those that are familiar with uh, um, transatlantic slave trade and some of the history, you'll understand the term the middle pas passage. Well, our middle passage is called the great transition. We are in the middle passage right now. The middle passage being that moment between the, the, the native shores and the new shores, that moment that is spent on the ship in chains, that's the middle passage, the trip from home to new home. We are on that trip right now. While everyone's out enjoying themselves, getting their juice, running through the streets, dancing and parading like, I know you guys have seen these recent videos mainstream media is putting out now. Everybody is so elated. We are all being transported to the new world. But it's a virtual one. It's not, it's not a physical world. But this is really what they plan on rolling out. Why will they be successful, at least to a degree? Because they are utilizing a certain channel to make it happen. And that's public health. So we're on the ships. What are the ships? What are the vehicles? What's the vehicle? How are we doing this transition? We're not on physical ships. Well, we are on this type of thing called policy. Virtual and digital managed policy, specifically public health policy. Via data-driven uh, data driven technology and communications. And of course, uh, information processing via networks. This network system that I've been talking about here. If we are in the middle passage, the public policy, public health policy, medical industrial complex, uh, 
bioidentity, right? This new digital ID, uh, DNA play, because <laughs> that's what's going on here, right? DNA play, playing God, right? Uh, gaining ownership over your identity via your genes and your mental and physical and biological health, makeup, etc. This is the new slavery. There's no getting out of this new slavery. This is your genetic makeup is no longer in your hands. It's, it is in the hands of scientists and specialists and experts. And it is being managed via things that aren't even human. Machine learning. Data-driven machine learning. Algorithms will be controlling your DNA. Does any of this sound okay? And and I know if there's people out there that are listening and they're like, you know what, this sounds crazy. That's what we are. The power to hack human beings can, of course, be used for good purposes, like providing much better health care. But if this power falls into the hands of a 21st century Stalin, the result will be the worst totalitarian regime in human history, and we already have a number of applicants for the job of 21st century Stalin. Just imagine North Korea in 20 years, when everybody has to wear a biometric bracelet which constantly monitors your blood pressure, your heart rate, your brain activity, 24 hours a day. You listen to a speech on the radio by the great leader, and they know what you actually feel. You can clap your hands and smile, but if you're angry, they know you'll be in the gulag tomorrow morning. Welcome. Welcome to the show. This is where we talk about some of these things as long as we can. But this stuff is, it's not knocking at the door anymore. It's making a cup of coffee in the kitchen. If the ships in the vehicle is policy, mandates, regulations, so forth, uh, what's the system? The system is a, a mixture, a mixture of different industries. We have big pharma, big food, big science, and big tech. They make up what we call the data-driven technology and communication networks. The future is rooted in food, health, and genetics. Now, from a biblical perspective, which is one we hold here, we understand how all of this works and why all of this is happening. So I just want to put that out because I know I have listeners that aren't believers and I, hey, you know, to each his own. I, you know, I was a totally different person, say, 10 years ago. Okay, so I can identify with all those that are lost or all of those that are confused and all of those that don't know what to believe. Okay, but what I will say is those of those of the faith we understand we we are the only the only true faith mind you but the only source for true understanding of what is going on here and why all of this is happening and what is going to happen this isn't about me this isn't about my information my knowledge i just put some pieces together but the ultimate truth the ultimate source of all of this is the most high god through christ and he has the blueprint for us already laid out. There's no saving you on this earth. There's just methods of escape here and there. There's only one savior and that has nothing to do with this world. That's, I just want to say that because that's not our goal here. We're not trying to save anybody. We're just pointing you in the proper direction because a storm is coming. So we have big pharma, big food, big science, big tech. Big pharma, we have Merck, Moderna, uh, Gilead Sciences, okay, uh, Big Food, we have Monsanto, Gates Foundation, uh, Big Science, we have Genentech, NASA, SpaceX, which is Musk, Musk, Musk is just a, a representative, right, which, and we understand SpaceX is just a contract for DARPA, so all of those people that think Musk is such a great guy, he's just a henchman, he's a, he's a, an advertising agent, he's, he's an image consultant, <laughs> For DARPA. At the end of the day, the majority of this is all a military thing. Just like the beginning of the internet, 
all of this is military based because this is a war on humanity all these wars all these geographic and international wars nonsense the real war the real war is on mankind and his soul and what better way to rob man of his soul to separate him from god than to take away his essence by merging him with a machine food health and genetics that's why all you have been hearing about for those that have been digging a little deeper those who have been going past the mainstream media news right you would have noticed that the major movements right now are rooted in food health and genetics isn't it interesting how all of these things represent the foundations of life food have to have food to eat of course this relates to air and water as well health the functioning of the biological systems and of course genetics the building blocks of the human being if this isn't a goal to usurp god by becoming him i don't know what is <laughs>